you have a 35 kPa on the inlet pressure. That's uh, state A, pressure at A. And the temperature at A is 270 Kelvin. What do, what do you think about that pressure? You're flying at high altitude, whereas it's, it's, it's lower, a lot lower pressure than atmospheric pressure, which is about 100 kilopascal at sea level, right? And you're at 270 Kelvin, it's cold. And the inlet t velocity is uh, 300 meters per second. Then you go through the diffuser to get to state one. Then you go through the compressor and the uh, air is slowed in the diffuser, the pressure ratio across the compressor. Notice, they say the pressure ratio for the compressor. They didn't say the pressure ratio for the whole engine because the compressor and the turbine have a different pressure ratio, true? The turbine pressure ratio is not 12. It's just the, so we go from P1 to P2, where P2 is the pressure ratio times P1. That pressure ratio is 12. The turbine inlet temperature, so you burn enough fuel in the combustor to get the turbine inlet temperature, T3, to 1450 Kelvin. From that, you put it through the turbine. But the turbine just produces enough work to run the compressor. Uh-oh, they throw you this curveball that the isentropic efficiency of the compressor is 80% and the turbine is 85%. That's a couple extra steps, but it's doable. It'll make you really think, what am I doing, right? I'm, I'm trying to walk, I'm trying to work through this problem and I don't want to slip up. So you'll have this efficiency of the turbine of 85% and the efficiency of the compressor of 80%. Then you go into the nozzle and there you go. So this is state four and this is state B. And they want to know the exit velocity. So we want to calculate VB in units of meters per second. And they want to know the thrust developed by the engine. Well, how are you going to calculate the thrust? The thrust, F, is equal to the mass flow rate. They did give us the mass flow rate, 20 kilograms per second. We're going to let, neglect the added mass due to the fuel. Times the velocity at B minus the velocity at A. True? And so this did come in at very high speed. Okay, so all you have to do is now get the velocity at B, and once you got that, this, this part's easy. Well, to get the velocity at B, you've got to march through the whole thing. Get the pressures and temperatures everywhere. All right? Can I show you the result? Here it is. You can set it up. So let me outline... Every state using A, 1, 2S, 2, 3, 4S, 4, and 5 are labeled. Uh, that should be B. Sorry. <laughs> but hey, 5 is B. The pressures, 35, and temperatures. So this pressure is given as input. That temperature is given as input. That speed is given as input. Actually, go ahead and calculate the kinetic energy of that input. Is the kinetic energy of the input just one-half V squared? It is. But one-half 300 squared sure doesn't look like 45, is it? He has remembered our unit conversion factor. That 1,000 meters squared per second squared is exactly one kilojoule per kilogram don't forget that unit conversion factor, and you do get that uh, kinetic energy on the inlets, 45 kilojoules per kilogram. How do you get the enthalpy on the inlet? Well, it's a function of temperature only, out of the air tables, true? So there's the 270. What is this PR? I'm going to be doing some isentropic processes through the diffuser, okay? 
So I'm going to use the air tables and that PR column. So we just looked this one up as a function of temperature. Now, how do I move from A to 1? The kinetic energy, the energy balance. So what is 315.1? It's calculated as the sum of these two. 270.11 plus 45 give me 315.11. Energy balance. So now I have the enthalpy. Air, if I, if I know the enthalpy, I look up the temperature, I look up P sub R. So I look up in the air tables the temperature and P sub R knowing enthalpy at state 1. Now this PR and that PR, that actually tells me what is the pressure ratio across the diffuser, true? So across a diffuser, PR at A divided by PR at 1 is equal to the actual pressure at A divided by the actual pressure at 1. And now you find the pr actual pressure at 1 is 60 almost. It went from 35 to about 60 kPa. It's higher at the outlet of the diffuser. Now you say I'm going to go from 1 to 2s. So if I do the actual pressure ratio across the compressor, which was 12, then I get PR at state 2s. I can look up H2s. I can look up T2s if I want it. And this is simply times 12. But I want to get actual state 2, so I compute the work that would be required to drive that compressor. It is 322.5 kilojoules per kilogram, which is calculated as the difference between this H and that H, isn't it? Isn't it the actual, the isentropic work is the change in H? So then I say, but we're going to need more, so we divide by the isentropic efficiency, and I need 403.1 kilojoules per kilogram actual work in, which means the exit enthalpy at state 2 actual is higher. It's 718. All right. But this is a key. I need to get that. And guess what matches the the, 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 it matches this one, which is what the turbine actually needs. It needs actually 403, right? Perfect match. We uh, have an input pressure specified. We know the same pressure. And so, boom, you have, well, the pressure doesn't matter, but you get the enthalpy at state 3. You look up PR as a function of temperature at 3. Then you say, I know this needs to be 403. If I divide by the efficiency of the turbine, then the isentropic work for the same pressure ratio across the turbine, I need to isentropically produce 474.3 kilojoules per kilogram. So what you do is you say, I know H4S. It's 1575.57 minus... 474.3, right? So I get that it's 11. So it's it's this one that I'm able to calculate for 4s. Once I know 4s, I come across and I can get T if I want it. But I the key is I get PR, PR at 4s. And then I come over here and I say, okay, PR at 4 divided by PR at Three is equal to P4 divided by P3. And that gives me the actual pressure ratio for the turbine. And it's not the 12, it's the 3.79. So 522 divided by 137.7 is 3.79. Did that make sense? You have to do these problems on your own, I know. But if I give you a road map, I hope it's a little easier. Okay, uh, then I know that it's the same pressure ratio, so I'm not going to change that pressure between 4S and 4. I'm going to leave that pressure the same. 
but I'm going to go back and I'm going to say it's uh, the actual, four actual is taking this much off. So I go from 1575 down. You don't need to compute this. Well, yeah, I do need that PR because I now expand it isentropically from 4 to B through the nozzle. When I expand it isentropically through the nozzle, I try to get uh, the H as low as possible, to get the kinetic energy as high as possible, to get the exit speed as high as possible. And now we find out, oh, you're coming out with 900 and 36 meters per second. So that's the answer for part A. 936 meters per second. And then this line, sorry, I had to scroll down. To compute the forward thrust of the engine, it was just my 20 kilograms per second times the difference in the speeds, 936 minus 300. Look good? Yes, sir. Can you say it again? Okay, um, I'm out of time. 